Welcome back to the Conference Center and Global Specs Material Handling and Supply Chain Technology event. I'm Jim Brennan. Today's supply chain companies demand a near-perfect order record to reduce the cost of labor, transportation, and errors within their distribution centers. But just what do we mean by the perfect order? Well, supply chain management requires complex chains of transactions, and the more accurately those transactions are recorded and tracked, the more efficient the chain becomes. Unfortunately, the more touches or non-automated transactions there are, the more chances there are for errors. For many companies, errors proliferate and high rates of accuracy are elusive. The consequences of those errors include invoice deductions, lost sales, even lost customers if the customer's expectations are not met. Perfect order metrics have been developed to deal with these issues. Now, one definition of a perfect order is when a product arrives on time and complete as ordered and is billed correctly. The benefits of using this type of metric are threefold. Number one, they include the ability to measure and improve the supply chains of you and your customers. Also, the ability to identify steps that will ensure supply chain success. And lastly, the general fact that unless a problem is quantified, nothing will be done about it. To add some perspective, an internal analysis by a packaged consumer goods company uncovered a surprising statistic. The company found that every time an imperfect order was shipped, it added an extra cost of $200. That's if you add up the extra cost of redelivery, replacement of damaged goods, and processing costs for putting things right. Well, fortunately, there are tools for improving your perfect order score. One of the most important is document automation. Document automation systems let users transfer and store information electronically in a uniform format rather than having to maintain a variety of different, often incompatible, media. These systems make information available when it is needed. They're typically scalable from standalone PC-based use to multi-user, multi-location environments. And they also provide a lot of flexibility for entering documents into the system. They can be scanned, computer-generated, or come via web pages and EDI systems. Audio, voice, and image files may also be entered and accessed through the system. Metadata forms allow for linking, tracking, and accessing everything in the system. Various levels of security and controlled access are also part of these systems. Now, detailed logs can be maintained to track all actions performed on a document from the moment it is created until the time at which it's archived or deleted. And a version history of all documents can be stored. The Defense Distribution Center is one big example of what this kind of system can do. It is a document management system that helped the DDC to electronically capture, process, manage, and store millions of documents that are used in the supply of military units around the world. More than 20 million pages per year are processed, invoices, packing lists, and bills of lading from worldwide distribution sites. Now, before I introduce our next speaker, I'd like to invite you to submit your questions at any point during this presentation by using the Enter Question and Submit button you'll find at the base of this video console. You can also download a copy of our presenter's PowerPoint presentation for easy reference and note-taking during the session by clicking on the button labeled Download PPT. Now, our next speaker has 30 years in the supply chain management business designing software, hardware, and complete systems that improve the accuracy of supply chain data. Joining us to help us learn more about the concept of the perfect order and the benefits of document automation is Tom Napier of PSI Engineering. Tom, welcome to our Global Spec E event. Thank you, Jim. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me to present this presentation might ask, what is the perfect order? Well, according to Supply Chain Digest Dan Gilmore, Editor-in-Chief, the most common definition, I believe, is an order that, it perf that is perfect when it is on time, complete, damage-free, and of course, the correct documentation. We measured the perfect order by what's called the perfect order index. And that's a formula where we measure the on-time delivery, arrival, the um, completeness of the order, the, uh, it's got to be defect-free, 
correct documentation and all that uh, multiplied together equals the perfect order index. How does the uh, document affect the perfect order? Well, we've got a few issues. Protection of privacy, we have on-time delivery, we want the order to be correct, and we've got other issues such as floor space, environmental sustainability, and we've, we've got a high demand for throughput within the distribution center. Inside the distribution and fulfillment center in the pre-internet and uh, mail order days, the distribution center used to send a load of uh, product via pallet to the store and people would go and shop. While we had very few documents, or if any, that were required, the uh, uh, customer contact, they picked it. And we also had uh, very few privacy issues. You'd hand over your money and you'd get your, your product. Today in the future, we've got very, very fast-paced distribution centers that are shipping their orders directly to the consumer. Uh, this creates new marketing opportunities and challenges. The opportunities is that cost 30% less than to send the um, product to a store. And uh, this also helps uh, with customer satisfaction. They get their order directly. It's in their own uh, package. The uh, challenges, of course, is that every order needs a packing slip or invoice. We have catalogs, discount coupons, uh, any other type of pre-printed collateral. Uh, personalized notes, happy birthday, it'd be nice to send something like that. Uh, the fulfillment center uh, time or the fulfillment cycle is very, very critical. From the time that the person orders the uh, product until the time that the um, uh, person receives it, that's called the fulfillment cycle and that is crucial, that, uh, that is the shortest time possible. We also want to make things easy for the consumer to return their product if they're dissatisfied with it. typical fast-paced distribution center. To the far left, you see where the storage is uh, located. In the middle, where you see the, uh, the four racks there, it looks like. Uh, actually, those are very, very fast-paced uh, automation called A-frames. The uh, middle is where some other work is being done and some other products are being picked. Those are usually called A, B, and C movers. And then the uh, product is assembled into the box um, labeled, documents inserted, extra collaterals inserted, uh, void fills inserted, and then it's shipped out. Well, as you can see that if we are increasing our internet uh, and more orders are uh, being uh, uh, ordered through the internet, then we've got a higher demand and of course we've got to make sure that those orders are correct. And like a beehive, um, we either have to work more efficiently or we have to uh, uh, construct a new distribution center. Market trends. Uh, the e-com and retail uh, or e-retail or e-com uh, has got a growth of uh, 15 to 50 percent quarter to quarter year to year. Uh, the USA Today uh, published an article a couple of weeks ago that said that the um, uh, Black Friday had a 20% increase in growth over uh, 2009. So 2010, 20% more than 2010. Shopping channels, well, we're seeing more of the shopping channels on our televisions these days. And Walmart.com and other order fulfillment companies are seeing 80% of their daily orders with a single line item quantity of one. That means somebody is ordering a single product and of course all those products need documents. The direct-to-consumer orders, uh, e-com industry challenges, we've got the majority of orders that are a single line item, quantity of one like we've discussed, and the packing slip and shipping label are required on every order. Well, we know that there's bottlenecks within the distribution center, takes significant floor space for a lot of people to assemble the uh, documents and uh, labels and so on. Uh, the uh, productivity, uh, when we get busier, we get uh, more flustered, so we actually slow down instead of speed up. Uh, manpower is expensive. Um, we've got uh, aging workforce. And all these issues 
cause a, an increased error rate. What is a document? Well, a document is a pre-printed image or electronic file with the intent to communicate information. They can be either pre-printed, catalogs, flyers, brochures, package inserts, or they can be print on demand, such as packing slips, invoices, and manifests. Perfect order. Our document philosophy and methodology is to treat every document as if it was, as if it was our own. Okay, so never allow the wrong document to become part of the wrong order and triple check the document and order to guarantee a correct marriage between the two. Types of document creation, we've got dynamic print-on-demand methods, laser printing, inkjet printing, thermal transfer printing. There's pictures of these here. Types of document printing on demand, uh, laser printing is the least expensive method, so for an 8.5 by 11 or an A4 uh, monochrome printed page, it costs approximately 1.2 cents per copy. Inkjet printing is a little bit more expensive, and it also prints in both monochrome, which is black and white, and color. Uh, color laser printing is even more expensive. Uh, and it prints approximately uh, the same cost as a, an inkjet does for monochrome. Thermal transfer printing is the most expensive method, approximately three to four cents for a four by six label. Usually it's only one color, and the color is usually black. The perfect order and the document considerations. What do we want to consider? Well, first of all, accuracy. Throughput is another consideration. Uh, there's a lot of hype today about environmental and sustainability, but we do want to help save the planet. And of course, uh, we're not going to be able to have anything installed unless we have the correct ROI and then eventually the total cost of ownership. The environmental aspect with uh, laser printing is actually very minimal. However, for uh, typical manual operation, you can see here in this slide that we use a lot of toner and drums, whereas in the automated process, the toner and drums is greatly reduced. Here you can see a total cost of ownership in different types of laser printers. Once again, here's a comparison chart with the different types of laser printers in the total cost of ownership scenario. Here we can see a before and after shot of a distribution center. And as you can see, we've reduced the lines and reduced the amount of conveyors. That uh, uh, means that we can get a faster throughput. We need uh, fewer motors running, and we uh, uh, don't need as, as, as much in the conveyor network as we would with a uh, standard manual operation. We all need software to drive our systems, and this is a typical automated uh, document system. And as you can see in this slide, the, we've got the uh, ERP, uh, which is uh, SAP or JD Edwards, PeopleSoft. We've got the warehouse management system or warehouse control system. Uh, PSI has got our own software that uh, drives our own automation.